This is Pete Thomas from season two of NBC's The Biggest Loser, giving you an update, season number nine, episode number four. Well, this particular week, the show starts off with a pop challenge. Now, in the pop challenge, the contestants have to run laps, run laps, go pick up some little magnetic cards, bring them back to home base, and stick them in a little, little voting machine. I was almost expecting the Florida recount debacle to be recreated, or, or maybe we're going to have some advertisement from a hotel chain. None of that. None of that. Just, I don't know why they were doing it. They were just putting these little magnetic cards into a machine, and... When some special thing occurs, I don't know what it is, you get a check mark and suddenly you get a point, all right? And so when the teams go through the entire process, the team that gets three points wins immunity and they win the power to assign penalties to the rest of the team. And so they go through that process. The red team uh, ends up winning the immunity and they get to assign these penalties to other team members. Uh, I don't know if I even trust this challenge. You know, what's so special But there's no, like, super decoder ring that I can, you know, scan on the magnetic cards to tell if they were truly, truly, you know, the correct cards. Who knows? Anyway, we'll go past there. And we'll go from there, and we see some of the red team drama. The red team from last week, you know, they threw the way in, but of course, they don't want to admit they threw the way in. And so, you know, they get into it with Bob and Jillian, and all of that drama goes on and on and on and on and on. Because we believe them. We believe that they worked out for two whole weeks and that the wife lost no pounds in two weeks. We believe it. We absolutely believe it. Yeah, sure we do. Anyway, after that, we get to the real challenge. Now, the real challenge is the contestants are in this contraption and they've got to lift themselves up by working this little lever thing of a Bob Jiggy and rise all the way to the top. You know, I wonder if there's some type of subliminal message there. You know, the contestants are hooked up to a crane. And they have to lift themselves up to the top. You know, is there some kind of subliminal message like, don't get this big ever, ever again? I don't know. But anyway, in the end, our second favorite team, the gray team, wins the challenge. And what do they get for that? Well, they get to call home. Now, I have to tell you, from personal experience, nothing is worse than being on the Big Azusa Ranch, except for maybe prison. I haven't been there, but I have been in seclusion on the Big Azusa Ranch. No family, no friends, no telephones, newspapers, magazines, Blackberries, Facebook, nothing. I mean, it sucks to be in seclusion. You know, your other contestants are there. They become you. They become your family. The people behind the scenes, the crew, they become your family. But you miss everybody. And so we see those tearful calls back to home. Then we get to the last chance workout, and we get to the weigh-in. In the weigh-in, the black team from Michigan, yes, they keep doing it. They lose 15 combined pounds. They're safe for this week. And the green team gets on the scale with some of the worst body language in the history of The Biggest Loser. And, of course, they end up below the yellow line. And they knew it was coming, and they're angry at somebody. Somebody's going to pay the price. Anyway, they kind of prophesied the fact that they were not going to do well. In the elimination room, Migdalia goes home, and we'll see what happens down the road because there's some things that were going on there. We wish that Migdalia had stayed there on the ranch because there's some inner issues that still need to be dealt with. And maybe, you know, there's a, a, sometimes in this show, you know, your family members are your actual enablers. So who knows what exactly was going on, but we look forward to seeing her future success. We look forward to seeing her at the finale, having lost a great amount of weight. Hopefully, you know, she starts to deal with some of the mental side of things, some of the stresses and emotional things that begin to hold her down. Hopefully, she can break free of some of those things and begin to lose weight. Now, here's the thing. The thing that I want to talk about is the purpose of gameplay. The purpose of gameplay on the show is for one reason and one reason only, to last as long as possible. You know, your goal on The Biggest Loser is simply to last. My goal was to last as long as possible until I had learned all the things that I needed to know to make a lifestyle change and make it permanent. And so when we see the red team going through some of the gameplay, I'm not really upset at them as long as they don't make too many enemies along the way because they'll make it enemy, enemies will come back to backfire on them. So hopefully throughout this process with the gameplay and all of that, hopefully they're making friends behind the scenes because it's not really cool to be making enemies of your trainers. But we'll see how that whole thing plays out. Remember the goal of gameplay. Nothing wrong with gameplay as long as you're sticking around on the ranch and you're learning learning the lessons you need to learn. Anybody on the show who has a goal of winning $250,000 through the gameplay, 
I mean, you're going to fail. You're just not going to make it. This is not what the show is about. The finances, the money are a secondary thing. Anyway, on a final note, check out The Biggest Losers. We're going to be at the University of Michigan at the women's basketball game this Sunday. So check us out. Check the blog out. Listen, check out MLive.com and have an awesome week. Remember, there's a winner within you.